Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the synthesis of Grignard reagents. Grignard reagents are made by the reaction of organohalides and magnesium. Uh, and from a very simplistic standpoint, it looks like the insertion of magnesium into the carbon halogen bond. Um, from, a, from a mechanism standpoint, uh, this is not exactly how it happens, but, uh, and I'm going to show a little bit of it, uh, but maybe not, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe the whole thing. Um, so it turns out that the reaction between the alkyl halide and magnesium is something of a radical reaction. And depending on where you see this mechanism presented, you might see the initial step look uh, as follows, where you have, oh, I did not want to do that. And you have magnesium donating one of its electrons. And because we're talking about magnesium metal, it has two, two electrons, uh, into... Uh, to the and to using that to abstract uh, the halogen from the carbon halogen bond, and that would generate a carbon radical and uh a magnesium halo, halo, halo magnesium kind of radical that then can recombine to form the carbon magnesium bond. And you know what? Here, let's just copy and paste from up there. Uh, there are some folks, though, that will present this mechanism just a little bit differently. So I'm going to copy all of the pieces uh, for a minute. Maybe, maybe not the middle pieces. Where instead of that first uh, electron donation from magnesium being used to abstract the halogen, it donates one of its electrons into the carbon halogen bond without breaking it. So this is a little bit, this is a little bit weird kind of single electron transfer. Uh, but it generates magnesium with a uh, one electron, and it's also a cation. And now we have this radical anion on the in the carbon halogen bond, and it's just going to be tricky to to uh, to represent. But the the extra electron is just in the 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 sort of in the bond, so it's been put into one of maybe the antibonding orbitals. Uh, and then this is followed by fragmentation and, and reorganization into the carbon radical, the halide anion gets together with the magnesium. Um, if you're in an introductory organic chemistry course, I can feel confident saying that many instructors aren't going to require you to try to uh, share or to try, try to reproduce this mechanism. Um, and, and it, perhaps which one predominates depends on, on the structure of R. Before I move on into the series of videos about applying the Grignard reagent to doing things, I want to just talk very briefly about uh, what what can R be and, and what can X be. Uh, so we can, and then to just show a couple of specific examples. So R can be alkyl. If, you know, we're talking about, you know, like ethyl, you know, chloroethane or um, 
it's bro it's a brutal bromide or whatever. R can be aerial, uh, which means it can be an aromatic ring, so you can have like bromobenzene or, or other aromatic systems. R can also be final. You can actually make Grignard reagents out of things on you know, like chloro, uh, chloro pro, chloroethene. And then also, so that's what can X be. Uh, X can equal chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Uh, I know that sometimes iodine doesn't play well, but this is a case where iodine can play well. Um, fluorine doesn't play well. The carbon-fluorine bond is way too strong. Um, iodine is actually the best of the halogens because it forms the weakest carbon halogen bond. Uh, but iodine car or organic iodides are harder to prepare because iodine doesn't play well in addition reactions. Uh, and so chlorine and bromine are the more common halogens used for this kind of reaction. And so then let's talk about uh, the formation of a specific Grignard reagent, and I'm going to use uh, isobutyl bromide here. And this reaction just occurs. The reaction of the, or this reaction just occurs by adding magnesium metal uh, to a solution of the halide, usually in some kind of ether solvent. Um, and in the next video, when I talk about the reactions of organ or uh, uh, Grignard reagents with protic molecules. Uh, talk a little bit about the rationale for using ethers as a solvent. Uh, and the reaction, the outcome of the reaction is just simply again inserting magnesium into the carbon bromine bond. Okay. So in the next video, we'll talk about. Uh, the role of Grignard reagents as bases. They are very strong bases and they react with protic molecules. So that limits us in our choice of solvents for the reactions that they do. And then I'm going to move into talking about the scope of the Grignard reaction and what kind of carbonyl electrophiles can be used and what the, the outcomes are. And then I'll wrap up the series talking about using carbonyl electrophiles or, and Grignard reagents in the synthesis of compounds uh, to form new carbon-carbon bonds. Thanks for watching.